Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a fair bit of work on the flashlight and we're going to be making it track objects in the game world as well as enemies with a bit of a priority system so that it prioritizes the enemies and also so that it forgets that points in the world that are low priority exist after a little while. That way it doesn't repeatedly focus on the same thing when the thing that it's focusing on isn't all that important. Now besides that we're also going to go ahead and implement our procedural sway just like we did for the revolver as well as the collision with the environment just like we did for the revolver. Then we're going to have to make a little bit of a change to how it handles that collision but regardless we'll get into that later. First off let's go ahead and break it down using a blackboard. The tracking for the flashlight is going to be broken up into a couple of basic parts. We're going to have the general spread as the flashlight moves around in its cone. Then we are also going to have a targeting system so the flashlight will target objects of interest in the environment and look towards it. And finally we're also going to have collisions with walls to make the flashlight up to parity with the actual revolver. First off we're going to need to know if we have any targets so we're going to put a whole bunch of objects into a group and then every so often the player is going to check to see if any of the things in that group happen to be in front of it and the objects within this group will be a node that has a priority enum on it. So we'll have low, medium, high, that sort of thing, with high being enemies and lower ones being things in the environment with a couple of mid-range ones so that that way we can differentiate between things in the environment to make the flashlight focus on certain things. And it will also have a boolean on those objects saying if they've been looked at before. That way low priority things can just be glanced at once and never really interacted with again. So once we have a valid target, then all we have to do is go ahead and cache that node for a period of time and that'll be our current flashlight target. Now we do need to go ahead and get our spread and the spread is going to be calculated exactly like it is for the right hand. Then we're just going to cache it and we're going to be using that later to blend in and out of the targeting system. So once we have the spread we now need to actually have a weight and this will be how much we're looking at the target versus how much we're just defaulting to the normal spread with one being the target and zero just being normal animation. But we'll get to that in a second. So we're going to have a variable that's called the current left target tracking weight and we're going to be adding to it anytime we have a current target and if we don't have a current target we're going to be subtracting to it from it. Then we're going to be lerping between these two based off of that value. Now for this to work we're actually going to have to cache this variable that way when this thing goes null we can still blend out of something back to our normal variable. We're just going to cache that into a variable which will be in local space to the camera so that that way we can get it afterwards. Now we have the flashlight panning through the environment like the revolver but also targeting based off of enemies that it needs to look at. It also whenever it targets an enemy we go ahead and set that boolean that says whether it's been seen or not to true. Now we can take that flashlight's current location and go ahead and run it through the exact same function that we've been using for the revolver and it should work exactly like normal. Now a note on this we are going to have to make some slight modifications to this specifically passing in as a parameter whether this thing is left or right and this is just because in order to blend in and out of collisions we need to keep track of the left and right hand separately. I had hoped to make this entire function completely separate from which hand was actually being calculated, but it doesn't seem like we'll be able to get away with that. So we're just going to have to make it slightly adjustable based off of whether it's the left hand or the right hand. That should be pretty much it. Hopefully this has broken it down a little bit for you. Let's go ahead and dive into code and get that implemented. Now, before I actually jump into code, I am going to go over what I have changed to the world. You can see right here in front of this post here, we have a little node that is just called flashlight point six. It has a couple options here and if we open up the code there's really nothing to this script besides the fact that it is a global class which means we can just right click and spawn it in the scenes and then it also has an enum for its priority with none low medium or high and then a boolean for has been targeted we're actually going to be setting this to true anytime we actually look at anything and then if the priority is not high then we're just going to ignore that when it comes to looking around for new points of interest for the flashlight to focus on and then there's of course the priority here. Now one thing important to note about these we do have to go ahead and put these in a group. This group is called flashlight points. We'll come back around to actually accessing this group but I just went ahead and made a pack scene with this node and nothing else in it and then I also went ahead and instantiated that on the chest target
target of the AI with a priority of high. So let's go ahead and dive into code and get started. Now, first off, we're going to go ahead and create a new export category, and this is going to be for flashlight variables. And in that category, we're going to need two vector twos. This is going to be the delay duration. That's the delay in between looking for one target point and the next. And then the flashlight point duration, that is the delay that the flashlight will pause while looking at something before it goes back to searching for new things to look at. In addition to this, we're going to go ahead and create a variable for flashlight per priority level additive. We're just going to set this to one for now. This is going to be one second for every level of priority. That's just going to be added to that point duration range. So that way it looks a little bit longer at things that are higher priority. Then we're also going to go ahead and set our flashlight view range. This is the distance from the player that the flashlight will actually be detecting things as well as the flashlight target move speed. This is going to be the speed at which we move the target location from one location to another. This just makes sure that if we have a group of enemies and we're hot swapping between them for targeting that we move smoothly from one to the next and don't just teleport. Then we also need the flashlight blend speed and this is going to be the speed at which we blend in and out of the targeting mode. And lastly of course we're going to have flashlight field of view clamp and we're just going to set this to 30. Remember this is 30 on either side so it's actually 60 in total diameter and that's a cone in front of the player. Now down here we are going to go ahead and add a couple private variables. First off we're going to rename all of these variables to be for the right arm as we're going to have to make these variables separate for each that way we can that way we can have one arm blended block uh, we can have one arm bumping into a wall and not the other. Then we're also going to want all of the left variables for that as well and finally we can add two new variables which are going to be the left target tracking weight as well as the left hand target position vector and these two are going to be a little bit different the tracking weight is the rate at which we blend this is the current weight from zero to one that we're blending into the targeting mode of the flashlight and the last left hand target position vector is just like the is just like the last right just like the last left offset vector but instead of offsetting the hand it's the last position that the hand was looking at when it lost tracking of a target for it to point at. And in addition to this, we're also going to go ahead and create two variables. One will be the current flashlight target, and that'll just be of type flashlight point. It's just going to be one of these markers. And that'll be null if we don't have anything actually to look at. And then the current flashlight timer, and that's just always going to be counting down to zero. And anytime it reaches zero, we're just going to kick off the looking for target system. So down here in the physics process, there's a couple things we need to change. We're going to check to see if we are aiming and the current flashlight is not equal null and the current flashlight priority is less than high. So basically we walked past a pillar and we were pointing our flashlight at the pillar and we decided to aim down sights. We're going to go ahead and set that flashlight target to null. That way, if we aim down sights, it kind of just erases whatever we were currently looking at. Now we are going to be changing up this adjust environment with a Boolean saying whether this is currently the right hand or the left hand. So first off, let's go ahead and set the is right. As both of these are technically the right hand, we're just going to pass true to both of those. Now down here, we're just going to go ahead and create three new variables. And these are going to take the place of the original current tilt weight and the original last tilt offset vector and look at vectors. And they are just going to be accessing whether this is the right hand or the left hand. And it's going to be swapping back and forth. And then we're just going to assign that down here to each of the variables. And all this is going to do is make sure that the adjust to environment tracks on whether it's the right hand or the left hand. And if it is the right hand, then it uses the right hand variables. And if it's the left hand, it uses the left hand variables. That way we can still use the same script. Now we're going to go ahead and get started on the actual flashlight code. So first off down below adjust to environment, we're going to create a new function and this is going to be called update flashlight target. And we're just going to pass into it the delta time. And we can go ahead and call that in the process function. Now, first off, we're going to go ahead and create an if statement. And we're just going to be saying if the current flashlight target does not equal null and it's not currently in the field of view, then we're going to go ahead and erase it. But we do need to go ahead and create this function for checking to see if something is in the field of view. So let's go ahead and create that. And this function is going to be very simple. It's going to take a position and it's going to return a Boolean saying whether it's in the field of view. So we're going to get the dot product of the forward vector of the camera node. So that's the negative basis dot Z and a vector pointed towards the target position from the camera node. Now, dot products will range from one to negative one, with one being they are pointed directly at the target and negative one being pointed directly away. But we need to map it to degree so that we can directly check it against the field of view claim. So the way we're going to do that is first we're going to invert it. So that multiplies it by negative one. So now it'll be negative one when we are looking directly at the target. Then we're going to add one to it and that'll bring it down to zero to two. And by dividing that by two, we now have zero when we're looking directly at the target. And if we multiply 
multiply that by 180, we now have 180 when we're looking directly away from the target. Now, the reason why we do this is because it makes it a whole lot simpler to just check to see if we're currently less than the field of view clamp. So if we're within 30 degrees of looking directly in front of the player, and we can go ahead and pass that back as a Boolean to check within the if statement. So for the if statement, all we're going to do is check to see if the current flashlight target does not equal null and it's not currently in the field of view, then we need to go ahead and set it to null. We're also going to go ahead and reset the current flashlight timer so that that way it'll go ahead and look for something new to look at. We're going to go ahead and set the current flashlight timer to minus equal delta time. And this is just going to iterate it down towards zero. And if we are currently zero, we're just going to go ahead and return there because that's all we need to do. However, if we're not currently zero, we are going to go ahead and get all of the flashlight targets. Now to get these, it's going to be a little bit complicated. So the simplest way I know of is to get all nodes within group. This allows you to do it without doing any physics checks. We do need this in a functional data type. So as currently, it is just a array of nodes that is every node, regardless of distance or whether it's in front of the character. So let's go ahead and modify that. So first off, we're going to use a dot select function, and this is going to be a link function, L-I-N-Q. And we're just going to say, and we're just going to say access flashlight point. This is going to give us an array of flashlight points. Now we're going to go ahead and filter that array. And to filter within link, you just use the dot where function. Let's just indent this down so it's a little bit easier to read. Now we're going to say where, and then X is our variable that we're currently filtering. We're going to say anywhere that X has not been targeted or X dot priority equals priority dot high. That way we can retarget things that have already been targeted before. And the X dot global position dot distance to camera node dot global position is less than flashlight view range. And lastly is in field of view. Now, the reason why we always put the more complex math at the end is if we've already targeted something, we don't need to check all the math to determine if it's within the field of view. That's just needless math. So start with the easiest things and iterate over to the harder things to do from a math side. Now we can go ahead and use order by descending to order by the priority. So the highest priority will be at the top and the lowest priority will be at the bottom. And then we can just use the two array function. Now, next up, before we do anything with that, we are going to go ahead and need a random number generator. We're just going to call this RNG and we're going to use the RNG.randomize function. This gives us an object that can generate random numbers fairly effectively. And we're going to be using this for determining which flashlight we're targeting, as well as the timer that we're going to be on. Now, first off, let's go ahead and check to see if the flashlight's count is greater than zero. So something was within those parameters. And then within that if statement, we're going to check to see if flashlight zero priority is priority high and if so we're just going to go ahead and set the current flashlight target to the first one however if it's not we can go ahead and use the rand i range and that's going to get a random integer between zero and the flashlight targets count minus one so that way we just get a random flashlight target now we can go ahead and set whichever one we selected has been targeted equal to true and we can go ahead and set our timer to a random range between the x and y of the flashlight point duration range plus the flashlight per priority level additive multiplied by by the current priority as a float variable. And this just converts it from zero, one, two, three, four on up over to a float variable so that we can just multiply it by something to get an actual additive. And that's all we're gonna have to do. However, we do need to handle if there is no targets. And if that's the case, we're just gonna go ahead and set our target to null if it hasn't already been turned to null. And we're gonna set our delay timer to the delay duration range dot X and Y as a random variable between those two variables. And that's pretty much it for the update flashlight target. Now we do need to go ahead and go over to the process function and do a bit of updates over here. So now that we have an actual target for the flashlight to look at, we need to actually handle the updating of the target's real location and rotation. So first off, we're going to check to see if the current flashlight target does not equal null. And if so, we're just going to go ahead and start adding to the current left target tracking weight. This is just going to be between zero and one. So we're going to use the mathf.min to make sure it never goes over one. And we're going to be adding to it the delta multiplied by the flashlight blend speed. This is going to be our essentially our lerp value between normal animation and the aiming animation. Next, we're going to go ahead and set our left hand target position vector. And this is going to be a vector in local space to the camera node. And it's going to be lerped into using the flashlight target move speed. Now, the reason why I ended up doing this is because if I aimed between multiple targets at the same time, say there's a group of AI and it was jumping from one to the next, it would just teleport because the current left target tracking weight was one and it was just hot swapping between them while it never actually went down on the tracking weight. So this just makes sure that 
blends smoothly. And because it's in the local space of the camera node, we can go ahead and extrapolate this even after we no longer have a target to be looking at. Speaking of which, if we don't currently have a target, we need to go ahead and subtract from the current left target tracking weight, delta multiplied by the flashlight blend speed and make sure that's clamped to zero. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and set up our spread. Now our spread's gonna be set almost identical to the spread for the right hand, but we're gonna take the seeds for the noise and we're gonna just add 10 to them. This means that the right hand will tend to do things right after the left hand has already done them. So the left hand will start to turn a little bit to the left in the random noise and the right hand will follow after. This way we get it feeling a little bit more natural. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and check to see if the current left hand target tracking weight is greater than zero. Then we need to go ahead and update the hand. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and use the look at function to turn the flashlight towards whatever the global position of the last left hand target position vector is. Remember, even if the target tracking weight is null, it'll just be whatever the last position known was. Then we're gonna go ahead and add to that our spread. And then after we have done that, we are going to lerp between the baseline spread value and that left hand IK container rotation. So whatever the current rotation is after we added in the look at vector, and we're going to use the current left target tracking weight. This means that we blend from the baseline, just noise kind of just moving around randomly into that looking at rotation smoothly using the current left target tracking weight. Then if that's not the case, we're just going to go ahead and use the spread value. Next, we can go and set up our global position. We're going to be doing something almost identical to what we did with the right hand up here and be setting it up based off the left hand idle base position as opposed to the right hand idle base position, as well as the left hand idle IK container instead of the right hand idle IK container. This is pretty much exactly like we did with the right hand. And finally, we can go ahead and adjust to environment, making sure to pass false as the is right variable and using the left hand idle IK container dot global transform in both of these and that's pretty much it if we make sure to go ahead and save and build go ahead and hop in game we go ahead and look around everything looks all right if we aim down size so that looks fine and if we set here idle you can see the left hand kind of moves around randomly just like the right hand does and if we walk up against the wall you can see the left hand now independently collides with the wall and if we walk up next to a wall with our right hand down we can actually shoot past the wall even though our flashlight is not pointed over there and vice versa with the left hand. And if we go ahead and walk over towards the AI, you can see that the flashlight now will target dynamically things in the environment, like the enemy. Now the pillar it already looked at, so if we walk over here to this other pillar, you can see the flashlight is looking at that pillar. Now it just dynamically moves away from it. And if we all walk over here towards the enemy, you can see it's aiming at the enemy. And if we just aim down sights, it goes ahead and resets. And then because the enemy is high priority, we can retarget against the enemy multiple times. And that's going to be pretty much it for today. I hope this has been helpful. Next week, we're going to be working on making the up and down bouncing for when we're walking, as well as possibly breaking into camera shake. But as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.